Hello everyone, today I want to talk a bit about how you can configure your uh, Snyder Electric's uh, analog input card, in particular the model called uh, AHI, which supports both hard and 4 to 20 milliamps. Uh, we'll be showing how you configure 4 to 20 milliamps today. So um, this is my project, my program. So uh, let's connect to the PLC to show you where we are at right now. So if you go PLC and hit set address, this IP address of your uh, PLC uh, CPU and you hit test connection make sure it works right it's good so the IP address of PLC is set up here you double click this guy here double click here this is where you get your IP address of a CPU just remember right 1788 so anyway now you're connected to the PLC right and hit connect not connected yet but if you hit connect right now now you're connected to the PLC so if I look at the EIO bus which is my remote rack my AI card is here. This is the card I'm trying to configure right now. I've already configured this and this, but this is the card I'm trying to configure. Just as a high level uh, introduction to what I have right now, I've got uh, 580 PLC in a hot standby formation, and I got a remote rack using a CRA and circling it back again. This is exactly what it is, but with a different IO card in it. So uh, I know AHI supports both hard and 4 to 20 milliamps. Uh, in this demonstration, I'll show you how to do a 420 milliamp configuration. So first of all, what you do is uh, you go tools. You have to add uh, uh, let's go disconnect here. You have to add a DMT first. You go tools, uh, and you go DMT browser, and you go right click here, and you go add. So you're going to add the same card that you have uh, added here. So it's going to be AHI here. BME AHI 0812. If you want purely 4 to 20 milliamp card. You're gonna to have to get AMI, so it's gonna be BMX AMI 0812, right? That will give you a 4 to 20 milliamps. So once you do that, uh, double click this guy to add uh, a rack here, uh, the uh, entry for DMT. So what I like to normally like to do is to add actually identify rack number and slot. This is gonna be slot five zero five, right? Uh, you can, if you can leave it blank, blank, it's fine. But the next time you add another one more DMT, they're going to put six numbers, alphanumeric numbers in here. But anyway, this will give you more control. So slot five, hit OK. So they'll add one entry here, right here. So this is your new entry here. So uh, first of all, uh, you're going to have to name this guy here. So in order to name it, um, that's a naming convention that you have to follow. You can get the naming convention manual online here. So I'm just gonna open a trusty old Google here and type, you guys type this, Snyder Electric M580 creating a device uh, naming for DHCP, right? Like that. So normally this is the one. I'll, I'll put a link for this uh, in my, uh, in, in the comment section here. So what you're looking for is called creating a device text in this document. If you click here, Page, if you go to page 148, that's where you'll find it. So I'm going to zoom a bit closer here so you can actually see it. It tells you how, what is the syntax of naming uh, that particular rag. That, that is very important, guys. If you don't have this name correct, your AHI will not communicate to your uh, to anything, right, to, uh, to the CPU. So the, this is the syntax. First of all, rag ID, well, underscore, slot number, underscore, module name. So let me give you an example what I mean by that. So right now, for me, I have uh, a slot 5 AHI on my CRA, right? So I'm going to open a notepad here. So it says for CRA is C followed by three uh, numbers ranging from 0 to 59. So basically, it's your rack ID. So I'm just going to write here C, right? And your rack ID, how you determine is you double-click CRA here, and you can see this number here. 001 without the underscore 00 that is your rec id so 001 is your rec id go back in here open the document in here 001 so underscore it says underscore of the rec id and the slot number which is actually two digits if you look at the example here this is the slot number right so mine is five so it's just going to naturally it's going to be zero five and then it says underscore module name underscore so my module name is 
AHI0812. So AHI0812. So that will be my identifier. Okay, just for an example, right? So this, okay, this is your module name. Before I do another example, let me show you another. So um, let's say if your AHI, I'm gonna open, it's on your main CPU bus itself. So if you double click this guy here, if you do have your AHI on say slot four, right? What does the identifier name is gonna look like, right? Identifier name. So it's gonna be, uh, this is 560, so it's gonna be M560. If it's on the, because it's on a hot standby, right? So if it's on a hot standby, one of them has to be identified as A, and the other one has to be identified as B. I have a video on how to actually set that up here. I'll put in the link below here uh, on this video on top right hand corner here. So uh, it will show you how to identify them. There's a dial at the back, uh, spoiler alert. So anyway, if my AHI is on this rack here, so it's gonna be A. If it's on this rack here, I'm sorry, it's gonna be B. So you can identify here. So M1560, if it's A rack, you're gonna put A underscore, and it's going to be slot 04. Still following the same rack ID, which is M slot number 04 underscore, and the model number, which is AHI0812, naturally. But this is not what we're having. This is not what we have right now, right? So I'm going to, mine is located on the CRA itself, slot 5. So it's going to be that. So what you're going to do is once you get that thing done, copy it, right? And then in your clipboard, double click here, double click this guy here, and you go to the slot where uh, you added the new one. You can see this is the one that I just added. Uh, it's called RS, R, R03S5. And then you click on this guy here, go address settings. This is where you have to replace, uh, add your identifier, right click, paste it. I know there's some simple help there, but it's not very clear, right? So once you enter that, hit enter, a pencil sign will come. Uh, some more configuration do, hit enable. Make sure it is enabled here, right? And you hit apply. So what this does is that uh, it get, identifies your device with which rock slot channel you are in. So um, another thing that you want to take note on this area is if you go channel, make sure that uh, the IP that's selected here is the IP address of your ethernet that's connected to the PLC. I do have a bunch of uh, Ethernet uh, connectors here on my computer. That's why I have a whole slew of IP addresses here. So this is the Ethernet uh, adapter, that's Ethernet port that's connected to the PLC. Okay, so once that's done, you can close this guy here. Uh, next, uh, we're gonna disable all the heart on this uh, card, mainly because we are not using heart. We're using four to 20 milliamp. So it's best practice to disable it. Just gonna close this heart. Where I can catalog here. So if you go in here, right click this guy here, device menu, configuration. Once you get into configuration, go expand your configuration again here, and then go parameter configuration. Over here, there's got seven channels of heart. You're gonna have to disable them. Again, this is only for 4 to 20 milliamps. You have to disable it. If you don't disable it, your 4 to 20 milliamp is not going to work because the device is going to try to talk hard. So make sure there's a pencil sign next to every one of them as you move along. The last one will not have pencil line. Just be careful. Just click anywhere else or hit enter. So you should have all the pencil marking here. So hit apply. So what you have done is you have assigned an identifier uh, and you have assigned and you have disabled the heart because it's going to be 4 to 20 milliamps. So you close this once you're done. So now uh, you are ready to upload uh, the configuration. So you go, uh, first you have to build, reveal all projects. Okay, once the rebuilding is done, you connect to your PLC back again by clicking connect here. So if it's connected successfully, you see a disconnect here. Now you're ready to transfer everything again to the PLC here. So you can get online with the PLC. Okay, you hit run. As soon as you hit run, 
you'll see, uh, well, 3, 4 was already working. It will turn white, which means it's good. Your 5 will still remain as red. Uh, I'll explain to you why it stays as red. Okay. Now it's back and running. Once it's running, like I said, it came back, and this is showing as red. So, um, okay, this rack is one way to check whether your IO card is working or not. I'll show you another way you can actually check. Okay, open your trusty browser and then enter your IP address of your PLC on the URL spot here, right? And it'll bring you to this screen here. So on this screen here, you click on scan the status. Sorry, scan the status. And it'll show you all the connection uh, that you have right now, the Ethernet connection. So the first one is your CPU. How do I know this is CPU? Is that if you click on PLC bus and click on this guy here, it talks to if you pay IP config. Okay, so this is the IP address. So uh, this is different from this, but they are under the same network, right? So this talks in a ring network, that IP address. Again, you know how they've got three ports, right? The 100 is on this one, 88 could be anyone, 100 could be anyone, but for this ring, they're using 100, dot 100 octet as your connection. So if you try to ping all of this, even this, the ping should respond, which indicates that your Ethernet connection and your configuration and your identifiers are all correctly set up. Let me show you a demonstration what I mean by that. Open your command prompt, right? Okay, um, I'm going to try pinging the CPU. 17100 naturally this that will work because or else you will not be able to connect to it so ping uh, it's really a good baseline here 100 it talks right so this is your cra's ip address 1708 how do you determine that you go in here you go off here and then go go double click your eio bus which brings you this one here double click the cra and it'll show you 1708 that's how you know that this is a cra so go back to your command prompt here and type ping 8 which is a CRA IP address hit enter she works too and then uh, the next one is your uh, AI AHI card at slot number 3 slot number 3 which is if I go to EIO bus 3 and 4 right they are working so this is 3 and 4 so it's 96 and 95 so if you go 96 it will ping. There's a good response from the card. And 97, which is your slot. Oops, 95 and 96. I think I went a bit too far. 95, which is your slot 3. 96 is your slot 4. They're all responding appropriately. And like I tested here just now, if 97 is your new card, number 5. If this ping responds, which means your configuration, everything is good to go. Something else is causing an error. So um, what's, uh, what's, what's causing an error is that uh, right now this, is, this panel is not hooked up to anything at all. It's, not, uh, it's expecting 4 to 20 milliamps, but it's not hooked up to anything at all. So if you want to see this turn white, how you do it is you double click this guy here, double click the card itself. It brings you to a section where well, they allow you to uh, uh, select uh, the, the the channel number, right? So if you click any of this, it's actually the channel number. So what you have to do is you have to uh, click this guy here and remove all this one by one. So you close this, say yes, and hit yes. So you still have to build the configuration on the side, they say. But uh, let's try this way. If you right-click this guy here, device menu, additional function, transfer to FDR. So you are basically transferring all your configuration back. So the configuration was successfully transferred. And now your checkbox is good. But right now, what happened here is that the you still have to do a overall compile and uh, 
compile and uh, download because this thing will not go away until you do that. So you go build, sorry, disconnect yourself here and then go build, rebuild all. Once that's done, connect to the PLC. You have to do a transfer. And then you run it. You'll see that your slot 5 will come normal here in the next few bits. 3, 4, 5 will come normal here sh shortly. And your web page is up fresh and ready to go. Before I close this tutorial, I want to mention a few things. Um, uh, first of all, uh, if you are only planning to use 4 to 20 milliamps and there's no plan in your horizon to use hard, right? Stick with uh, the AI card that only serves 4 to 20 milliamps, right? Which is the BMX AMI uh, 0812. But if you have a if you have plans to put hard, sure, put AHI itself. Uh, the reason behind that is that uh, the AHI is a bit uh, tedious and uh, in terms of configuration you have to make sure that uh, you don't forget to disable the heart. In the event that you need to enable the heart, you have to uh, backpedal and enable that heart like what I showed you just now, right? That's, uh, it's a bit uh, difficult to configure, uh, convoluted or tricky to configure. Second is cost, right? The AHI is naturally more expensive than AMI, which is a 4 to 20 million only. And thirdly is uh, network settings and cybersecurity. So for example, uh, what I'm saying is that, what I mean by that is that AHI uh, leverages uh, a lot of the IP address. It requires IP address, right? And the IP address, they get it from the CRA. So CRA and through uh, the uh, CPU. And in, in, in nuts and bolts, right, uh, uh, the uh, uh, the PLC the C, the PLC CPU has a DHCP server built into it, and if you want to connect your PLC to the corporate network, right, uh, with the DHCP server or any other network with a DHCP server in it, the two DHCP server will fight with each other to assign IP address, right? So the way you de detect that is that if you open your web browser here like that, you will see that your CPU the CPU will say healthy and okay, but your CRA will take anywhere from five to two hours to become green, check green. It will show fault for five to two, five minutes to two hours, and then it will come back on its own. That's a clear cut indication that the DHCP server, DHCP servers are fighting with each other. And another one indication is that even when your CRA is checked and there's a cross here, you will not be able to ping any of this uh, AI card, right? So that has to be taken into consideration. And yeah, like uh, it's a bit, it held me up for almost two days with tech support and all that. Uh, we were scratching our head, trying to figure out what was going on until we got a network guy involved and eventually pointed us in the right direction. So um, there's a lot of headache, I guess, if, you, if you're not using hard, save yourself money uh, and all this headache and just get the AMI, the 4 to 20 milliamp card. Uh, anyway, uh, before I close this, just a takeaway, one more thing, is that your AHI card, note that if you double click this, or maybe simple this way, double click this guy here, make sure that if you want to use any of this channel, make sure you put a check here before you proceed, or else you will not get any signal at all. Anyway, uh, I hope uh, that this tip will help you. Uh, it sure helped me out for two days. Anyway, you have a good day. Bye.